Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. So on January 18th, 2016, police were called after a gun was spotted through the fifth floor window of one of the rooms of the La Quinta Inn in Mesa, Arizona. Six officers showed up and called the residents of the room, Daniel Shaver and a woman who I have not been able to identify. The police immediately ordered them to the ground, their AR-15 rifles trained on the pair. The woman was made to crawl to police and arrive safely. Daniel Shaver, while also crawling towards the police, reached towards his waistband before Officer Philip Brailsford shot Shaver five times, killing him. No weapons were found on Shaver, and the weapons that were reported in the original 911 call were found to be pellet guns used in pest control. Brailsford was charged with manslaughter and second-degree murder. Brailsford's defense argued that he was forced to make a split-second decision for the sake of his fellow officers' lives. As from his perspective, it looked like he could have been reaching for a handgun. The prosecution, of course, argued this to be a wrongful death, investigators suggesting that Shaver could have been reaching for a handgun, but he may have also been trying to pull up his drooping shorts. Brailsford was also discharged from the Mesa Police Department due to unrelated violations on March 21, 2016. According to ABC News, there were four reports of excessive force and a non-regulation etching of the words, You're f***ed on his rifle. At the time of this recording, Brailsford is still an ex-cop and, according to his lawyer, is not seeking a career in law enforcement. On Thursday, December 7, 2017, Brailsford was found not guilty on murder or manslaughter charges. Afterwards, body cam footage of Officer Brailsford during the altercation was released and has spread throughout social media. Sean King, former Black Lives Matter leader and current commentator on The Young Turks, tweeted the body cam footage along with the remarks, Sadly, I've studied hundreds of videos of American police executing non-violent, unarmed people. This is one of the worst I've ever witnessed. The video is intensely disturbing. I will link it below, but viewer discretion is heavily advised. Still, you should come to your own conclusion about the case. Shaver's parents and widow have since filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the town of Mesa, Arizona. All the sources and videos will be below. Two of them are from the New York Times, which, to their credit, were actually pretty okay, in addition to some articles that just contain commentary. So now that you have the context, I can tell you what I really think about this. I'm no expert on police procedure, but I would think that they would subdue the suspect as quickly as possible to minimize the potential for danger for collateral, police, or the suspect. And they could use several things to subdue Shaver even quicker. They could have used tasers. They could have handcuffed Shaver when he was on the ground. Instead, they prolonged the standoff and put themselves, Shaver, the woman, and bystanders in unnecessary danger. But why would they do this? Even if Shaver were never harmed, every police department should be required to see this body cam footage and then show it to absolutely everyone. Show it to all the rookie officers as an example of what not to do. Watch the body cam footage. The police were authoritarian, belligerent, aggressive, completely amped up, and full of obvious and clear killing intent. I understand that these are not arguments, but I dare someone to prove me wrong. They threatened to shoot Shaver for perceived failure to comply with stupid and often contradictory commands. At one point, they got him to put his hands in the air, threatening to shoot him if he failed to keep them up, only to force him to crawl towards the officers. You know, crawling, an action that would require him to put his hands down. Though I should note that this is not what killed Shaver. Brailford's defense against the murder charge is that he had to make a split-second decision when Shaver bent his elbow for the safety of his fellow officers, but that's absolutely ludicrous. At no point would any sane, rational person consider Shaver a threat. Watch the body cam footage. He was doing his best to cooperate. He was begging for his life. All he wanted to do was leave that hallway alive. But the police responded to this father of two, sobbing and begging not to be shot with delusional ferocity, and executed him for the crime of trying to pull up his pants. Because the officer didn't say, Simon says, shot. Five times by a police officer complained about four times for his excessive use of force. A police officer with the words, you're f***ed, etched on his rifle. And he got away with it. The killer. This murderer. Philip Brailsford killed a man in cold blood, on camera, and he walked. This murderer is no stranger to violence either. He was cited four times for excessive force, including this incident caught on a phone camera. Brailsford 
wastes no time escalating this encounter. He goes out of his way to put himself, his fellow officers, suspects, and bystanders in unnecessary danger. Go ahead. I lock the doors. Lock the doors. Lock the doors. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Did you catch that? Blink and you'll miss it. That cop punched that kid in the back in the stomach. It's as I suspected. Brailsford's on top of the kid in the shorts, so other Mesa PD cops are like this too. Violent and utterly ruthless. <laughs> They're moving him to another aisle. I can only guess why. It couldn't be because they want to rub up this kid some more and don't want to be seen on camera doing it. I'm not just They're taking his friend and they're touching me. They're being so aggressive and they're touching him. I'm not looking at him. They're taking him right now. Imagine my shock. Oh yeah, look at this scrawny little soy boy with the tattoo sleeves. He's so manly, he has to force his victims to crawl on their hands and knees like a dog before he can gun them down like the vile little puke stain that he is. Brailsford is among the worst humanity has to offer and the living, breathing argument as to how Jesus died in vain. But it's not just him. Watch the video and be aware that it's not Brailsford who's barking out orders and swearing at Daniel Shaver. That honor belongs to none other than Sergeant Charles Langley, who's an accomplice to murder, and if the belligerents of his orders are anything to go by, also a vile example of a human being, the entirety of Mesa PD and the police union is an accomplice to murder. After all, the senior officials who saw the footage not only found no fault, but called it a good shot. <laughs> the entirety of the Mesa, Arizona Police Department must be fumigated. It is infested with vermin and a clear and present danger towards residents and visitors alike. I hope Shaver's family's lawsuit is successful. I hope that town is utterly bankrupted, all civil services shut down, pensions ended, and they'll have nobody to blame but themselves for allowing such a rotten police department to fester. Yes, I know, all cops are not like that. I mean, for one thing, the vast majority of cops in the United States are not part of Mesa PD, so that's points in their favor. Many are decent, hard-working professionals trying to keep their town safe, but all it takes is one guy and you being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Tell me, how many one guys do you think there are? If this precedent of a police officer getting away with murdering someone isn't giving you chills, then you aren't paying attention. What happened to Daniel Shaver is an outrage. Freaking O.J. Simpson here is on camera murdering someone, and a jury still found him not guilty. Make no mistake here. If the police can kill you for failure to do a handstand like a good circus monkey, our lives are now all in jeopardy. The premise of the state is that we surrender our freedom for protection. But if they aren't protecting us, and in fact endangering us, then the state is no longer fit for purpose. This should be a massive wake-up call. The state will not seek justice on your behalf, nor will it protect you. So what's the solution? All police departments must be privatized. If Mesa police were contracted to a private firm, Brailford would never have been given a badge or a gun in the first place. What private police force would want to deal with the scandal or the lawsuits of a psychotic officer hurting or killing people? What company would even take that risk? Brailford's bad for business. To avoid lawsuits, their officers would not be trained to humiliate and murder suspects, nor would six fully armed officers be sent to respond to a call about someone who isn't even breaking the law. You hear that? Daniel Schaefer was not breaking the law, even if he had AK-47s in his room. Most importantly, if Mesa PD were private, Daniel Shaver would still be alive. But you know what? Although I've kept Philip Brailford's face on screen for the duration of this video to make sure all my viewers know his name and face, I don't hate him. Yes, he's a murderer, a thug, and the worst, most putrid example of a police officer a police unit ever allowed to carry a badge, let alone a human being, 
but I can't bring myself to hold any malice against him. Hear me out. I hope he has a great life. I hope Philip Brailford enjoys a long, fulfilling life, only to die peacefully in his sleep, surrounded by friends and loved ones. I want him to ascend to heaven and stand before the Lord, our God. While I can't possibly say how that conversation will go, I imagine it'll be something like this. God says, Philip Brailford, my child, you enrich the lives of your friends, the good family you raised, and your co-workers. You worked hard, and for thine effort, you lived a happy, long, and fulfilled life. Why didn't Daniel? 